Welcome back. We're going to go over another touchable solution today. This time it's going to be the touch event relay. This one is the one I actually recommend as well when doing touch-based events that aren't on sort of UI components such as Neos UI button or the actual UIX systems. Let's get started and we'll hop into smooth POV. Um, so we're going to cover, um, let me close this so we can redo it. We're going to cover basically how to pick up touch events from this lion using touch event relay compared to the other options. So I've done a video on touchable data, which I'll link in the video description. I also intend to do one on physical button, oh, well, which I'll also link in the video description. It's done, but that one's next because I like touch event relay more than physical button sometimes. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the lion. So I'm going to grab my dev tool tip, hit secondary. We'll get a nice box around the lion, open the inspector. Um, when we open the line here, you'll see we're on node ID 29. I have no idea what that means. Um, just hit the big up arrow and you'll see you end up on the line here. This usually happens with FBXs where they've got like sub objects, which are um, the meshes within, FBX, uh, within Blender or the 3D modeling package of choice that were created. So now we're on the top on lion.fbx, we're going to go ahead and add the touch event relay node, uh, sorry, component. That is in transform interaction touch event relay. Now, Touch Event Relay has a bunch of um, options on it. Um, most of them you don't really need to worry about. Um, I haven't played with them. I don't, to be honest, use them. I can kind of guess what they do, but uh, I will go over them as we go. Uh, the only one here that is quite obvious is the Accept Out of Sight Touch. Um, as talked about in my Touchable Data uh, tutorial, Out of Sight Touch is basically if you touch something whilst not looking at it. So here I'm waving my laser at the lion, but I'm not looking at it. And that's an Out of Sight Touch. So with this um, uh, component added, you're actually done. You don't really need to set up anything else. What you do need to do, though, is grab it with logics. This is going to be a logics heavy tutorial, so um, bear with me. With my logics tooltip equipped, I'm going to go ahead and grab touch event relay and spawn it in the world. And then I'm going to open up my node browser and instantly go to interaction touchable, and you'll see touchable events is inside here. With touchable events spawned, you can then plug it into touch event relay. Now, I know this might be confusing seeing as the previous video we did was on touchable data. Um, the reason why touchable data is called touchable data is because I requested that it had a name change from touchable because it was being confused with touchable events. Just so that you know, touchable events will take a touch event relay. You can see that with event source touch event relay. Um, hope that clears it up. Here I'm going to make the arrow a little bit smaller. I'm not sure why it's so big. I think it's something to do with the um, size of the, the, the model that's in play. With that done, I'm going to move the Logics node uh, browser out of the way, and we're going to talk about the uh, Touchable Events node. This node is very complicated, and the reason why I recommend it as well is because you get so much data about the Touch Event. I'm going to go through um, each, and we'll see what we can make with it. So, the first one at the top here is a impulse that occurs when a Touch Event happens. And what do I mean by that? I mean any Touch Event. So you'll see if I hover over the lion, we get a huge cloud of impulses. We've done 71, I've only touched it twice briefly. That's because it's outputting an event for hovering and it's outputting several events for hovering. It's outputting like a start, a stay and an end. And we'll talk about those as we do them. Underneath that, you'll see there are two properties here that look kind of weird. You might have not seen them before. There's hover and then there's touch and they are both the event state properties. I'll go over those in just a second. But we're going to skip over them just for now. We'll come back to them. There is point, which is the point of the model that you touch. There is tip, which I believe is the uh, the tip that touches it. There is type, which is the type of touch. Um, types can be three. Uh, there is the uh, remote touch, which is by the laser. There is a physical touch, which is when I actually you know go up and, and, and touch it. You'll see we've got more events there. And then there's the out of sight touch, which again is if I'm not looking at it. I don't have out of sight touch enabled here, but if I do, I can look away from the lion, turn on my laser, and miss it completely. But I can still touch it because the um, accept out of sight touch is enabled. This property here will uh, give you the type of touch that is happening. You know, is it a physical, is it a remote, or is it an out of sight touch? And the bottom here is the source, as in what caused it to touch. Uh, you can get sort of who touched it by that, um, but you don't actually need to do that. And the reason is that this event will output impulses on the user that touches it. So we're going to go uh, over um, how to use this event more successfully, because it, it does appear to be confusing, and when I first used it, I was confused. But first of all, I want to make a, a big point clear again. All of these 
uh, outputs are only valid for the length of this impulse, which is like one update cycle or one impulse. So write them or use them. Um, you'll see that coming up a lot. Um, I mention it in many other videos where you've got this kind of structure. If you have an impulse coming out, you need to write or use the data. We're not going to be writing it today. We're just going to be using um, some impulse-based logic to kind of filter out and show you how to use the, the node a little bit better. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go into flow and we're going to if. And so if will take an impulse and it will output two impulses based on the state of this condition. So right now, because I don't have the condition specified, you'll see everything comes out the bottom. And that's because this is false. If I turn this to true, you'll see everything comes out the top. I'm going to delete that now. I'm going to go to operators. I'm going to go to equal equal. And we're going to plug this in. And now equal equal, just check if a value is equal to something. I'm going to go here to touch, and I'm going to put touch into the top. And then if I pull this out, we can say begin. So what's going to happen here is if the touch event that we're receiving is type of touch begin, as in I'm beginning to touch it, it's going to output to the top chain here. And if it's anything else, it's going to output to the bottom here. So if I move out a little bit, you'll see here when I hover over it, it comes out the bottom. But when I touch it, you'll see we get one event out of the top. If I delete this, we can just ignore the second output of the if, and now we're not getting any events unless we click it on the top. And that takes us back to the um, fire on true setup that we had with the uh, touchable data. Like I said, again, the reason why I suggest doing this is you get so much more data. Um, it is a little bit more to set up, but you can be so much more explicit with what you're doing with touches. You can make much more like interactive objects. So um, use touchable data when you, when, where if you can, but if you need more control, use touchable events uh, and touch event relay. You can do the same with uh, hover here. So we can say uh, instead, if hover begin, and now when I start to hover over it, you'll get one event. And when I stop hovering over it, you won't get any events. You could mix this together using an or. So you could say, if it's type begin on the hover or, and we'll need equal equal, I'm secondary clicking on the node here briefly, and it swaps to the node that you're um, aiming at. So here I'm on if, and I secondary push it on equal equal. So we can pop that into or, or is just a bar here. Say touch, begin, and now uh, plug this into the top. And now you'll see we get an event on the top if I hover over it, or if I click it. Now I'm going to show you what the point and tip values to do. Um, I don't really have anything I can do with them, so I'm going to go ahead and write them to a data, uh, a data variable. As I've described before, only write them if you really, really need to. Um, you should be able to use them um, effectively within your um, code if you if you wish as well. So here I'm going to go ahead and write, and I'm going to write the point to this variable, and we'll pull out a display node. And so now when I hover over it, you'll see the coordinates of where I'm touching it. I'm not quite sure if these are world coordinates or coordinates on the um, on the model. I will play around more and let you know. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. But play around with that. It's uh, it's fun. I've not really even used point. I'm just showing you how it works for uh, completeness sake. Uh, the same with tip. You know, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write tip to another variable in the same um, in the same impulse, so we can take a look and see what the difference is. Okay, so for that we'll need tip to go into there. Okay, cool. They look about the same. I'm not sure. Uh, this will happen from time to time in tutorials. I won't know everything. Um, Neos is incredibly large um, and very complicated. Uh, go ahead and ask me in the comments, or I'll reply with a comment, or maybe Fruits will sometimes, about what both the difference between those are. I'm not sure. This is getting a little bit complicated, so I'm going to back out some of this logic, and we'll go over the, the last two properties on the output here. I'm 
I'm going to leave the if though, because I'm, I'm going to need that one. So this time we're going to look at the um, type, which is the touch type. And I'm going to go to operators, I'm going to go to equal equal again, drop that in, hook that up, and then we're going to put type into the top. And then we're going to pull this out and we're going to say, hey, if this is a physical event, output to the top, otherwise output to the bottom. So you can see here that now when I mouse over it, we get loads on the on the bottom here. But if I go up and I, I pet the line here, you'll see we got some on the top here. Yeah? That's how you figure out if it's physical, remote, physical, remote, etc. As for the source here, what we can do here on the source is we can say slots get slot plug in the source into get slot and then we will need to write this again again only write it if you need to but we're going to go ahead and write it anyway and we're going to go ahead and write that on any touch event into the slot variable that I've spawned here and then we'll display that so now when I touch it we'll get the source of the touch and you can see here that that is the laser. That might not seem very useful, um, but you can get like sort of, you know, what 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 touched it directly. I'm going to take this with me as I walk up and we'll see what a physical touch does. Ah, you can get the, the bone that touched it. So here you've got the, the finger bone that's touched it because there's a, 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 a touch um, source on the tip of my finger. I'll go over those uh, in another video, but here you can see my index finger touched it. My left index finger, right index finger touched it. That to the laser touching it. You could even do cool things like slots, uh, get object root, which will get the nearest object root. And we can write that inside instead. So here you'll see entity, which is the name of my avatar. Or you could even do, um, I wouldn't recommend doing this, of course. There's a better way of getting the user out, but uh, you could even do, uh, no, where are we? Slots get active user. And then we could go ahead and write that to a variable as well. So we'll uh, clear this out the way and plug this in here. And we actually don't need to do the object root there. We just need the slot that it's on because the laser's parented to me, you see. So now if I grab this, bring it over to the same place the previous one was in and mouse over it, you'll see there I am, probable prime, touching it. The touchable events should be generated from the, um, the user that touches the um, object anyway. So if you want to get the user a little bit easier, should be able to do that with uh, the local user. I will link my um, get the user who pushed a button tutorial as well, which talks a little bit more about that just in case it helps. But we're gonna go ahead and do this again with a write. So if we do the local user and we write that into a variable, uh, visualization variable user. Let me pull that out. Again here, we'll get me because I'm the local user who's touching that. Uh, do verify that that works in a world of more than one person. I'm not 100% sure, but it uh, I think I remember hearing it before yeah, that those events come out from the user that, uh, that touches it, because that makes sense. Uh, that's how the button event node works as well, and that's the one I go over in uh, the OCY button. I'm just unable to confirm that because I'm on my own in this world. Maybe I'll record tutorials with other people at some point, but that is not it. This video has been super long. Thank you very much if you watched to the end. There is lots you can do with touchable events. Um, I understand it's a bit more complicated than the other ways of getting touch data, but the power behind it is like super cool. Like you could have logics that sprawls out everywhere and do so many more complicated things to figure out like how long they're touching it, when they touched it, where they touched it, how they're touching it, and all sorts of stuff like that and do different behavior. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.